Hey everyone, welcome back to another video of Ant World Plays. Today we're playing the finale of The Elementalist Winter's Past. Yes, I said finale. If you guys are new to Choices, or the Choices videos that I play, um, apparently there's only four chapters of this. I'm serious. Apparent, yeah, it's short, and plus Christmas is next week, so... Yeah, I felt like this was gonna, gonna last until like next week but it's just four chapters so with that out of the way um what's there to do let's play the finale let's begin can you and your friends pull through to make the solstice one this solstice one to remember yes yes we can because i know we can this is the finale of course we're gonna do it By the way, I just got back from seeing cats. And in case y'all case y'all say anything about about it, I like I like the movie. Alright. Winter's Past Chapter 4. Solstice Bells. Bells you mean silver bells? The ghost of Solstice Pass lies through toward Kavya, howling with rage. Oh, I want Kavya. Miss Miss Mystery, look out! Kavya jumps out of the way. The ghost flies into the doorway, dissolving into smoke as frigid air blows inside. What was that? Shreya, the message you sent me said, Mother, that is Isabel. We read her diary and found out she's been trapped here as a, as the ghost of Solstice Pass since she died in that sto snowstorm. She's been waiting to see you again ever since. You're the only one who can calm her down. Yeah, but the problem is, yeah, the, but the problem is that it's been years since she passed, since she passed. So, so I'm pretty sure she has a, she doesn't remember who she is now because Kavya is a full grown adult now. Exactly what I mean. Just saying that creature is really Isabel, Isabella? Yes, Kavya gasps as a shadow swirls on, on the staircase, but then she steps forward, features tightening with resolve. Isabella, it's me. It's Kavya. I'm here. No, you're tricking me. You're making an illusion so you can leave. No! The chandelier shakes, spewing hot wax over where an ornaments fly off the solstice tree. I see. We've got to help calm Isabella down. Isabella, we aren't going anywhere. We're here to celebrate Solstice with you. And so is Kavya, I promise. Gold light bursts off of you and spreads through the chilly foyer, filling with filling it with soothing heat. The ghost slows down, hovering in the air. It's so warm. Kavya places a hand on your on your shoulder. Thank you, Anthony. I'll take I'll take it from here. Gabby makes her way to the center of the room, casting aside any ornaments flying her way. She calls out to Isabella. Isabella, I understand why you're scared and confused, and I understand why you don't think I'm real, think I'm Shreya. Think I'm, I'm real. Shreya told me everything. She picks up a branch that has broken off the solstice tree, a warm golden light glowing around her hands. But I have never forgotten you. Every winter I bloom one of the, a golden flower so that you're part of my solstice as well. The ghost moves toward the magic whispering around Kavya as the drawn to it. Kavya? Is it really you? The golden light completely envelop envelops the branch and it, when it fades it in place the golden flower. The, sh the shadows recede, and Isabella gasps, small hands going to touch her face. Kavya, it's you! It's really with you! It's about time. Also, if this I I almost, I almost got a tear. Kavya smiles and opens her arms wide. Isabella runs to them, hugging her tightly, and Kavya's voice is choked with emotion as she replies, Really, really. 
Mama and Papa left and people told mean stories about me. They called me the ghost of Sosa's past. Um... Aren't, aren't you the... Well, aren't you? You are a ghost, and you like solstice, so... Yeah. And I thought they were just... Were just that cruel tales. And I thought they were just that cruel tales. I'm so sorry I never came to visit. I wish I could have known you were here. Alice hears his throw softly beside you, and you glance over to see him blinking rapidly. You elbow him and whisper, Hey, don't get, don't tell me you're getting emotional. As if, you're the one tearing up. But his voice is gruff, and you both swipe your eyes. Ace nuzzles against the both of you, and Avi jumps into Atlas's arms and licks his face. Pepper appears on Kavya's shoulder and nuzzles against her cheek. Kavya's mouth drops open. Isabella, is this really... It's really Kitty, but her name's Pepper now. I wasn't too lonely this whole time because she stayed with me. Oh, Kitty, it's good to see you again. Thank you for taking care of Isabella. It's Pepper, Kavya. Ah oh man, my heart hurts, but it feels so full at the, at the same time. It's like the most painful kind of happy I've ever felt. That's what, how reunions are. How's this after? It will be okay. My chest aches too, but that's because this is a, such a beautiful reunion. I gotta ask, though, Freya. How did you, how did your mom know to show up? She kept saying something about a message. Oh good, I was waiting for the proper time to ask. Same here, I, I wanted to know f since last week. All right. All right, it was. All right, it was this week, it was this week. We did chapter three this week. I forgot. Yeah, I think we, uh, we all been wondering the exact same thing. Drea crosses her arms and a smug smile on her face. <laughs> the wards might have kept us from walking home, but they didn't stop me from sending word out about where we were. It was when we were out cutting down the tree, a simple little air spell, something mother taught me when I was just a girl, actually. Think of it as the magical version of a tune this, this note passing. Okay. You turn to Kavya and Isabella walking toward you hand in hand. Oh, is that the spell I taught you that that is that the spell I thought of, Kavya? It's like I like air magic the best. You can you can do you can do the most useful stuff with it. You can say that again. I think you'd made a great you'd make a great air at Isabella. Just then, you hear a knock on the door, and he steps into the foyer. Um, hi, so is every, everything okay? You guys never come, came home, and then I saw Mom running across the snow at, at like, 3 in the morning. And now she's holding hands with some random girl who's also a ghost. Okay, cool. Who wants to explain? You all fill Michal in, and Kavi introduces Isabella to her daughters. Isabella looks up at all three mysteries with eyes full of wonder. Daughters? Wow. Kavi, you're so old. You have kids. <laughs> uh, old? <laughs> oh. Right. Yeah. Yep, she's old. <laughs> Kavi winces and Shreya... And Nihal clap their hands to their mouths, looking horrified. Uh, the tree looks lovely. Hey, everyone, check out the Chosen Tree. Me and, me and my friends chopped down and decorated. Really captures the spirit of the season, right? Anthony, 
Most of us have already seen it. We were the ones who decorated it, after all. Definitely. Doesn't it, doesn't mean it isn't still worth sharing at more. A lot. A lot more. Right, Miss Mystery? Nice tree, wouldn't you say? Gavi lets out a soft chuckle, shaking her head. I suppose I am a bit, a little bit old, but I think to, but I like to think I've aged with grace. Oh, most definitely, Mother. Your beauty is timeless. Yeah, yeah, your radiance is like inspiring and motivating, and Isabella breaks into a peal of giggles. Your daughters are, are as silly as you, Kavya, and you're still super pretty, so come on. Let's go have solstice already. Yep. Ace chases after Isabella as she tugs Kavya over to the solstice tree. Navi bounds after them, yipping happily, and the rest of you follow along. Arf, arf. Oh, Isabella, I had an idea. It's your first solstice in a long time. All the decorations look beautiful, but I think I can make a little more... A little more festive with magic. Really? I want to see. One magical snowfall coming right up. A light powder powdery of snow drifts down from the rafters. It twinkles in the light of the flames dissolving far above. Your heads race up, races up. Ace races up the stairs to snap at it. Yeah, dogs like to do that. Oh, it's perfect. Anthony, you're so talented. Yeah, I've been told. Pepper leaps off of Kavya's shoulder and curls up on the bottom step, watching with one eye as Isabella picks up a present from the root from the foot of the tree. I want to give presents to my new friends who stayed and finished my list. And you caught up, you call on my toys, so I have a present for each of you. She stuffs a present into Atlas's arms. That one's for you. Come on, open it. Uh, yeah, sure. With Navi added encouragement, Atlas fumbles with the ribbon, finally lifting the lid off the, of the box to reveal the doll. People always say Lucina looks scary and kind of mean, but she's actually really nice. And just wants to, p and just wants to play with her friends, just like you. So I want uh, you to be friend to be her friend from now on, okay? Uh, I. Yeah, this is all figured out. Effie, what are you talking about? I have no idea. You start tick ticking off Atlas's qualities and your friends join in. Looks scary and kind of mean. That's definitely true. I don't look mean and scary. It's just my face. It's your face too. And anybody says that about you. Atlas, face it. You've got a resting mean face. But you're actually really... But you're actually really nice, just like Isabella said. Even though she... Humph, <laughs> that's a questionable claim. I call him civil at best. Civil, I say. Watch it, Harrington. I may be a, I may be a moon at, but I'm a ball of metaphorical sunshine. Yes, a ball of sunshine who really just wants to play with his friends, just like when, when you started that snowball fight. Isabella is right. I'm not. You guys are just messing with me. Nah, we just know you're a softy deep down. Admit it, Atlas. As much as you try to hide it, you're a sentimental sap with a big caring heart. Atlas starts to roll his eyes, but he catches Isabella waiting for a reply. He gives Isabella a surprising gentle smile. Thanks, Isabella. Me and Lucina will be great friends. I promise. Good. And I think you'll be friends with this present, Anthony. I picked him out 
just for you. Let me guess this one of the toys. Well, obviously. Isabella hands you a box in sprangled wrapping paper, which you eagerly unwrap. You let out a gas as, as you take out what's inside. Oh, I wanted the bear! Ace gives the dragon plush a tentative sniff. What do you say, buddy? A new friend? Mr. Dragon always wants people to smile. He loves sitting in the sun in the sunshine, warming his wings, so I thought of you. Good thinking, Isabella. Mr. Dragon's gonna love the sunny window by my bed. Okay, you're next. I thought really hard about your present. Isabella hands a box to Zeph, who unwraps it with an excited flourish, taking out a fluffy teddy bear. Oh, he gets the teddy bear? Greg. Greg? Oh, like, great, like Tony the Tiger. Oh. My act brave and fearsome, but inside he, still, he gets scared easily. I think together you can help help each other feel braver. Oh, you know Greg? And I have each other's backs. We'll be the bravest guys on the block in no time. You put us... You put... You smile as one by one the rest of your friends unwrap the presents Isabella stuffs into their hands. Oh, awesome. She gets... She gets a lion. Leona takes care of my... Care of my toys. She can be a little bossy, but it's because she's actually the smartest. I see. Leona understands that sometimes you just have to take charge to get what things done. She and I will be the be be the two peas in a pot. Of the a Valentine rabbit, Rebecca. Mister Bun Bun. I let it go. I let it go. <coughs> Likes to read books, so he knows a lot of big words. He helps me write the clues for you. Oh, he was the one. Ah, a true intellectual, I believe. Mr. Bun Bun and I will get along swimmingly. Thank you, Isabella. And a puffy, f fluffy pink hat for Griffin. That's happy. She's my friendliest toy, and she always helps everyone else. You're super nice, so I think you'll be great friends. I appreciate the compliment, Isabella. And I'm always looking for a great, for great new friends. And the penguin plus for Oster. Frosty Feet is used to the snow and ice, so she really loves the flowers and leaves in your hair. And she wants to meet your woodman family. I'd love to introduce Frosty Feet to my family. The saplings will love her. Thank you so much, Isabella. Yay, that just leaves the most important present. As she turns toward Kave, you slide up to her and lean down to whisper in her ear. Psst, I think, I think you're looking for this. You take out the locket out of your pocket and slip it into Isabel's hand. Here you go. Thanks, Anthony. Isabel looks up at Kavya suddenly turning shy. She shoves her shoe against the floor. Um, I wanted to give you this to you that the night I got lost in the snow. I really, really hope you like it, Kavya. She hands Kavya the locket and Kavya opens it up. Oh, Isabella. Gently, she places a hand against the pictures of her and Isabella inside the locket as tear streaks a tear streaks down her cheek, but she smiles brilliantly. This is the best gift I've ever received. Will you help me? You put it on. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah I really, I uh, hope you wear it every day. Kavya bends down so, uh, so that Elizabeth can fasten the locket around her neck, and then they give each other a tight hug. How do you hug a ghost? Unless they make themselves visible, um, I don't know. Mihal loops her arm around Shreya, sifily, wistfully. I haven't seen Mother this happy in, well, it feels like forever, especially nights on solstice. Mother truly deserves this, and so does Isabella. I'm so glad we could do this for them. As the snow stops swelling, Kavya and Isabel turn toward you and the rest of your friends. Our, as are we. As are we. Isabel and I are beyond grateful that you reunited us at long last. Aren't we, Isabella? Super duper grateful. You're welcome, little one. It's the least we could do after you invite us to celebrate solstice with you, Miss Mystery. Yeah, I'd say this has been a pretty sweet deal. Holidays and haunted houses, what beats that? Spoken like my one tr and only brother. But I agree, it's been a great time. Definitely no other solstice can compare. I'm glad you've enjoyed yourselves. I just, I have just one favor to ask to you. you. I like to make a solstice or ornament for this lovely tree. Mother, you're getting so festive. It isn't for me. It would be f Zulsa's gift for Isabella from all of us. And it would be special because we all made it together. Plus, I have an inkling of how we can help Isabella do a bit of magic before the night is through. You mean a tune magic? Me? Oh yes, please. I really want to try. Pepper leaps onto Isabella's shoulder seemingly they just as excited. I'd love to help with that, and I've always wanted to make an ornament with my own two hands. We Harringtons also are also known to design a solstice bubble every now and then, now and now and again. That sounds like a splendid, well, splendid. I can think of no better way to come out right. What do you say, Anthony? Help Gavin and Isabella make a solstice ornament to give Isabella a solstice gift. And to help her do magic before she moves on. Oh. I had a feeling this was coming. It's so sad that she was lost in the cold. With our magic, we can make an ornament that looks like whatever you want, Isabella. I want it to be gold and look like a star but also like a magic wand. So basically, a fairy odd parent's magic wand. Okay. Well, there are certainly plenty of golden baubles we can rip it up. Caviar levitates a handful of shining ornaments off the tree. Allow me to shape them, Isabella. Please describe your ideal magic run, and I'll do my utmost to create it for you. Well, one end needs a handle. That should be part of the star. Oh, I'm on a spiral below the handle, too. Bagarth carefully melt and stretches the metal under Isabella's watchful eye. The star needs to be pointier. Okay, okay. Yes, much pointier. Like this? Yeah, but the bottom should be more spirally. Your spiral's a disgrace, Harrington. Excuse me. No, wait. There's, there. That's perfect. I believe my handiwork is perfect. At this. Isabel crosses her arms, examining the ornament with a critical eye. Hmm, it needs to be shinier, though. What do you think, Kavya? Much shinier, Shreya. Why don't you help us out? No problem, Mother. Stand back, everyone. Shreya opens, a, opens her hands wide with, and a fireball engulfs the older man, turning the clouded metal bright and liquid. That should do it. Zeph, quick, dust the flames. 
on it, I'll keep I'll cool it down fast so it keeps its shape. Steve hisses off from off the molding ornament as Zeph encases it in water. When the steam clears, the ornament gleams a brilliant blinding gold. It could use a little buffing here and there. After Nihal's magic, air magic polishes up the ornament, it's even brighter than before. Wow, it's so shiny it almost hurts to look at. There's just one thing left to do. Gold is malleable, so I'll make it unbreakable. You sense Griffin's, Griffin's earth magic infused the particles inside the ornament, strengthening their bonds. Looking good. I think Anthony and I can add the f one final touch. A radiant luster. This will kick the shininess up more, more a notch. Typically, I'd recommend moon magic, but I think you're on something this time. Your, your and Atlas's magic, sun magic glows around the ornament, sinking into it with a metallic hum. You pick up the ornament, feeling a pleasant warmth on your f at your fingertips. The ornament catches the light every way you turn. It a faint swirl of red or red and origins dancing just below the surface of the metal. Ta-da! Wow. You and the you hand the ornament to Isabella. Light dances off her face as she turns it around, marveling over every inch of it. It's just like I'm like I imagined it. But what about having Isabella do magic, mother? Solstice is one of the most magical times of the year. The magic energy infusing the world is at the is at its peak activity. Isabel already understands the basic of magic. I think with her air marble and our help, she'll be able to tap into magic itself tonight. But when I tried to use air marble to get out of the, to get out of the storm snowstorm, it didn't work. Yeah, it didn't work, and that's how she um, passed away in the snow. You've got not you got nine attuned to help you out this time. Come on, give the air marble another uh, try. I think it will work. Okay, if you say so. Oh, you feel a stirring in the magic energy all around you and a tiny breeze picks up picks up at Isabella's feet and she almost drops the air marble and the ornament ornament in surprise in surprise okay right now I'll just give you a little boost and the rest of us will help too. You and your friends all funnel your magic, all your air magic into Isabella. The marble in her hands begins to glow. Now Isabella, cast your spell. Okay, I want to float the ornament to the top of the tree. A disc of air forms on her hands and lifts the ornament up in the, into the air. It floats up to the top of the tree where it nestles in the branches. I'll just fasten it into place. As the tree top branches branch twines around the base of the ornament, Isabella soars into the air with the air magic swirling around her. She performs a series of loop de loops. Ooh, woohoo! I have air magic. <coughs> she she falls gracefully back to the ground where she jumps up and down in excitement. Did you s did you all see? I did magic. I really did magic. I always knew you could.
A warm glow fills, fills the foyer, emanating from the front door, which shines with a brilliant white light. All my wishes have come true. I think I'm finally ready. I think I'm ready to finally leave. Yes, I'm sure you're tired of being cooped up in this house. It's time for a new adventure. The mysteries will look after the Deloon Castle from now on, from now on, Isabella. We'll make sure it's always spruced up for Solstice. Safe travels, kid. I'm going to take care of Lucina, just like I said, so you don't have to have to worry about her. And I prom and I'll promise, and I'll make sure Atlas keeps his promise. Navi sits on her heels as at Isabella's feet. Her tail thumps as Isabella scratches her behind her behind the ears. Be good, okay? Ace nuzzles against Isabella, making her laugh. The rest of your friends huddle around. It was lovely to meet you, Isabella. I'll tell the wood nymphs all about you. Thanks for teaching me ghosts aren't scary as I thought they were. Ah, ghosts are still scary. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned, I've learned much from you. You inspired me to look into supernatural qualities of ghosts and how they can relate to attune magic. And you've inspired me to help bow one person each solstice from here on. I'm glad you guys became new friend. I'm glad you guys became my new friends today. You're all so nice, and I had so much fun celebrating solstice again. Pepper nudges your chin and you bend down to pet her head. It's time for you to go to Huh. It was great snuggling with you. Pepper, make sure you keep Isabella company, okay? Pepper twines around each of your friends' legs, getting one last pet from each of them before saying bye to Ace and Navi too. Then Pepper hops onto Isabella's shoulder. Ready, Pepper? Let's go explore where this light takes light goes. And Kavya, please have lots of solstice, of lots of happy solstice from for me, okay? I promise. And I'll bloom a flower for you every year. Isabella turns toward the light, then hesitates. I, I'm sure there's nothing to be scared of. I'll help. Come on, guys. Let's help her feel a little more brave. Flowers sprout up from the floorboards, and and as your friends join in, they bloom into a beautiful pathway leading the light. Oh, so pretty, and it smells so good too. I wonder what flowers bloom in that light. You all wave as Isabella skips into the light. Kavya waits until Isabella has vanished, and then her expression crumples. I'll truly miss you, Isabella. Oh, mother. Shred and me all wrap their arms around their mother as the brilliant light fades away. <sighs> okay, I'm, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. You have my gratitude, everyone. I never thought I'd be able to see Isabella again. I'm not sure not quite sure how to process all that I'm feeling you you know what y you need a girl's night pedicures facial some hot tea and time to talk she loops her arm through her mother's and leads her out of the shanty waving at you at you and your friends over her shoulder put in science fills the foyer wow so that really happened huh it's hard to believe Isabella's really gone Hold on. Take a look at the co this. Look at this. Our cookies. Alice brings to the dining room table where the chocolate chip cookies you baked earlier sit, steaming as though they're fresh out of the oven. Gimme! You take a cautious bite, and sugary sweetness melts in your mouth along with rich chocolate. Ah, chocolate. The best thing of candy. They really are, they really are our cookies. 
Look, there's my ace shaped ones. And and my navi shaped ones. As you stuff a cookie in your mouth, the table suddenly fills with so much food it's nearly overflowing. You see ham, turkey, potatoes, roasted vegetables, and boatloads of gravy. What? This is like a Thanksgiving feast or something. Is this what a solstice feast looks like? I've never seen so much food in one place. Not even in Pentecost's dining hall. This must be Isabella's way of saying we can stay for Solstice dinner. We did skip dinner, remember? Actually, I'm absolutely famished. Wait, before we dig in, we have to make a toast. And I see all the ingredients. I need to whip up a batch of my famous Jorbach eggnog. Trina plucks, plucks up a plate of Yorba, of Yorba eggs and begins puncture, puncturing their yolks, which let out a quiet wails. It's like I'm being watched. With a flourish of air magic, Shreya begins to com begins combining ingredients with the Yorba eggs and records tea. Sugar, cream, milk, nutmeg, and one final ingredient for the flavor, Anthony, be a dear into the honors. But remember, your bar eggnog is magical. Whatever you choose will certainly give the drink a unique effect. Hmm. Peppermint candy game. It is the season to eat candy striped peppermint flavored everything. You crush the peppermint candy cane and dump it into the mixing bowl. Mmm, smells delicious. Like my toothpaste, but butter. But better. I said butter, sorry. I will try valiant, valiant, valiantly to pretend that you didn't just say that. I'm just fired up and we're done. Heads up, everyone. Magical mystery eggnog coming your way. You take several big gulps, relishing the taste of candy cane on your tongue. An energizing coolness spreads through you, and frost starts forming on your arms. Oh, look at me. I'm Frosty the Snowman. <laughs> the frost turns to icicles, but they don't stop growing. Shreya, help. Your eggnog's trying to freeze me alive. Oh, they'll melt off in a second. You drank too much so fast, and the cooling effect turned into, as well, into well, a deep freeze. Stop growing icicles, Anthony. You're embarrassing me. I'm embarrassing you. Alice melts the ice growing on, your, on you, and you make sure you s to slowly sip the rest of the eggnog, enjoying the peppermint twag. Anthony, darling, come closer for a moment. Rhea clicks her finger and you lean in close. Grinning, Shea leans forward and swipes her tongue across your upper lip. You had a bit of eggnog. Ooh. How unsettlingly of me. You might just have to kiss more of more off by the n end of the night. As you're feasting down, settles down, you rest your hand over your full belly, Shreya sighs, taking another sip of eggnog. Those Yoruba eggs take me back to freshman year. You really knew nothing about the magical world then, Anthony. Oh yeah, getting sucked, in t sucked through the mirror in my college dorm, ending up in a lake, finding out my teacher was a st satyr. Here. Good times. Good times. Pulling you out of the lake still one of my favorite memories. Never seen anyone show up at Pentecost with so much flair. As you and your friends burst out laughing, you catch Atlas's eye. Actually, Atlas and I know and I know this spell that lets the caster relive each other's favorite memories. Oh yeah, the one mom Mom and Nam taught us. It uses it's sun and moon magic, so me and Anthony can get it started. Get started easily. Just saying, I know one of them's, them's your mom, but I'm still so jealous you and Anthony get to hang out with the sun and moon sources. 
That spell sounds so exciting. I'd love to share my memories with you all. Just repeat after us. Solstice joy, solstice memory. Warm us now and for a, cent for a century. The rest of the pen, pass, pen pals echo your words and you're enveloped. Enveloped in brilliant light as you relive each of your friend's memories. From both books. First up is the day Griffin pulled you out of Pentergast Lake. You're a new student here, right? I am a student? Great. You missed the Hall of Mirrors by a mile, but you made it. Welcome to Pentergast, College of Elemental Magics. Next is the day Beckett received his pen pals bracelet from Shreya, even though he pretended not to be ecstatic about it. Perfection. We already look so much better. Oh, I remember this. I don't I don't see why you're making such a big deal over our bracelet. Then is the night you and Atlas first met and you snuck him through campus to your dorm. Oh, okay, my dorm is 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 in that building over there. So what? We just make a run for it? The night of the mystery job when Shreya introduced you to her sister. You must be Anthony, and Atlas, and Oster, and Griffin, and Beckett, and Zeph. I've heard so much about you all. Everyone, this is my little sister, Michal. And one of the times Oster took you to visit Sapling, the Sapling Grove in the Wood Nymph Forest. Yes, yes, I miss you all, too, and I brought Anthony for a visit. It's so nice to see you all again. And the moment Griffin became captain of the thief team, only give it to, give it to Zeph. In that case, I appreciate the offer, Captain, but I'm handing captaincy over to Zeph. He's the one who's really proven himself. What? I can't take that from you. You feel your own memory surface, bided by the magic surrounding you. Once we live. My surprise birthday party, reuniting with my friends off in my year, playing thief with my professors. Surprise birthday party. A candle on top of the leading multi-tiered cake on the table sparks life and your friends crowd around. You sing at the top of your lungs. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Wishing you joy on your birthday. Everyone looks at Becca. Oh, um, and a magical plenty to you, too. Hurry and blow out the sparkler before it explodes, Anthony. Wait, what? As the magic begins to fade, you sense Shreya's magic melt with yours, pulling you into a memory she wants to share with you alone. You feel Shreya's joy as she walks hand in hand with you by the lakeside. The last of the day, the the last day of your sophomore year. Mm. Do I remember this? No, I think I do. I might have been showing off for you a little bit, hoping you would flatter me at all. No. When do I ever miss a chance to flatter you? Never. And that's what I love most, so, love so much about being your girlfriend. Sometimes I wish I had a girlfriend. Well, I did, but I want, I want the next one to be... You know what? I don't know. As the final memory dis dissipates, you lean back in your chair with a happy sigh, your heart full, of, full and warm. You know... These last few years at Pentagast, I've had a setback or two. You think facing down world-ending, life-threatening enemies is a setback? Is just a setback? Why am I not surprised? But I've got all all of it because through all of it because of you. To pen pals, may we continue being fabulous together from it, from now until forever, though preferably with a fewer life-threatening incidents. 
I've yet to win one attuned unity award, and I need to be in top shape to do so. Ace, no, don't chew on Lucina. Atlas bolts up from the table and chases after Ace, who has Lucina in his mouth and is shaking her around. Ace, spin it out. Navi scampers after them, and Ace tosses Lucina to her. She catches the doll and sprints into the kitchen. Navi, you traitor! As Atlas runs off after them, you turn to your friends, taking out a small box. Perfect, he's gone. Look at what I got him for Solstice. I used the shrinking spell to make it more portable. But if just wiggle really your fingers around the box, it springs open, contents inside growing, and suddenly you're holding a laser tag set. I miss laser tag. Uh, anyway, it's a laser tag set for Atlas. It comes with a bunch of vests and laser guns for a group for a group match. Your friends blink blankly at you, and it's like the mistletoe scenario all over again. Uh, what now? Laser tag. It's in the tune of this game. People wear these vests and carry blasters that shoot harmless lasers. It's tag, but with lasers. Now that I know. Dang, the think of some crazy games. That sounds so atlas. I know, right? He loves trying out quirk. You know, quirky tomb, tomb this stuff. But I just know laser tag will be even better with magic. I figured it'd be fun for him if we all had a match together sometime this break. But I've been trying to find the right time for it. And that time is now. Obviously, we'll all play. We'll, we'll all, we're all together. Perfect for a match. A test of aim, agility, and magical ability. This sounds thrilling. What are you guys murmuring about? You have the laser tag set behind your back as Atlas returns, Lucina perched on his shoulder. Anthony, Anthony has a fun idea for a game, Atlas. Oh yeah, should I? Should I, like, get into a defensive position or something? Charge up a shield charm? No, Atlas, this is something you'd really like, and it comes with a special present from one brother to another. Play a game of magical laser tag with all your friends, so Atlas can enjoy the perfect closest present and the and end the night right. Laser tag it is. Ugh. You take the laser tag from behind your back and shove it into Atlas's arms. Here, this is for you. He looks. It, he looks it over, turning it around in his eye, in his hands an eyebrow worked uh didn't huh didn't take you for someone with access to lethal weapons but thanks that was oh my god I wouldn't give you a lethal weapon for Christmas well there is a movie called Lethal, lethal Weapon <laughs> You explain the rules of laser tag to him. Your friends, and your friends. He pricks his eyebrow. So a harmless roleplay game battle game with no relation to real life. I guess. Sick. Everyone, shoot up. This means war. This means war. Everyone gets 10 seconds to run, then the game is on. If you're hit, you're out. You darken the chateau with a flood of moon magic, then dope out in vest, out the vest and blasters. Run spin into the depths of chateau and you follow suit. You dart into the salon just as Shrey and Zeph come through their other entrances. You immediately level your blasters at each other. Wait, I purpose an alliance. The others won't stand a chance against us if we combine our forces. Ethy, you know we're much better as a team, my dear. <laughs> I never let a game of laser tag tear us apart, darling. More like we need team up to team. More like we need to team up if we stand in a chance against Atlas. But yeah, I'm down. 
I mean, but once it's down to three of us, it's a fair game. What's that? You guys are planning to team up against me? Huh. Zeph lets out a shriek as Atlas rockets into the salon. You all dive as she fires off a series of lasers. Purple laser. Wahahaha. <laughs> Eat laser, nerds. Now he sounds like a jock. Zeph narrow, narrowly avoids a bright purple laser beam. He, his eyes wide in comedic terror. I know that can't hurt us, but I'm really scared of Atlas. Atlas jumps in, onto the couch and backflips off of it, squeezing off a shot upside down. It strikes Zeph in the back and cries, cries out, If they shred, it's up to you. Your reign of terror is over, Atlas. Huh, this will be over quick. Thanks for the president thing. Sorry you can't stick around to use it any longer. His laser beam races toward you, giving you a split second to react. I'm not going down that easy. Heads up, Atlas. You take control of the laser beam, sending the purple light back at Atlas. He throws himself out of the way, just in time. Payback time. While you spread around out the salon, Atlas fires off another beam of light that hits Shreya. Yeah, no, I'm out, Anthony. Don't give up. Anthony, this way. Different way different ways from the open door. You sprint out then. Into the night. Atlas laser beams ricocheting off the walls and floor around you. Beckett waits from at the bottom of the chateau steps as soon as you and Griffin sprint it past him, he whips up an icy wind. This should slow him down. Atlas jerks up jerks to the stop to a stop on the steps and a layer of frost slow fine oh, on his feet. Curse you, Harrington. Nice one, Beckett. Dodge this Atlas. His laser beam races toward Atlas, but he bends backwards, melts his ice shackles with a burst of fire and does a backflip. Guess again, Langley. An egg, an invigorated grin spreads over Atlas's face, and he stares down at the three of you in glee. So you're really all teaming up against me. I guess I'm flattered. With a bow cry, he jumps down the steps, landing in the snow with a flurry of powder, he runs toward you. We need to stop him so, so that we can hit him with our lasers. I thought Atlas fleeing gets a little rocky over there. <laughs> Get it? The earth shakes and rocks jut out beneath Atlas's feet. He trips and stumbles. Nice one, Anthony. I've got him in my scope. Wait, who did that? You get at Beckith, whose blaster is still aimed at Griffin's back. Beckith, why did you... I never said I was a good guy, Anthony. We would have had to turn the, on each other eventually. You might not be the good guy, but you just turned your back on the real bad guy. Alice Laser hits Beckith, whose eyes widen in shock. No, my victory, my victory. Ha, huh. that's what you get, traitor. As Becca falls on his knees dramatically, you catch Oster waving frantically from the corner of the chateau. Anthony, this way. You dash toward the, through the snow toward her. <laughs> Dashing through the snow. You sprint into the forest, cross behind a sturdy tree beside Oster. <laughs> I've been branching through the trees and saw that what happened. Everyone has was has really gotten into character for this match. It's so much fun. Aster, it's you and you and me versus Atlas. Do you think we can win and do this? Oh yes. With the trees on our side, we should stand a fair chance. Oh, the trees are alerting me. Here here he comes. If you have time to gossip, then you have time to accept defeat. You feel a flicker of moon magic and Aster B. Atlas zeroes in on where you're crouched. 
she fires twin lasers at you and Oster. <sighs> Oster, you're our last hope. The trees wrap wrap their branches around Oster, shielding her, her and Atlas's laser as your head. Except you defeat Oster, but you haven't defeated me yet. A tree, the tree beside Alice reaches out, well, and branch a, out a branch and plucks the laser bis laughter on his hands. Hey. You can't. And then I just be and I believe I can't. Just Os now there's blinks stunned when Oscar's laser beam hits him. He then falls dramatically to his knees. No, I lost. I'm sorry. He quickly gets back to his feet, brushing snow off his knees. Okay, that was a blind side of a sentry. Good game, Master. And Anthony, good. And Anthony, good game, Dan. Me too. Excuse <coughs> That was so much fun. The others are on their way to see how the match ended. Sweet. I gotta give them a play-by-play -play of the last move. It was like action movie epic. Oster blinks, her eyes returning to the normal. It really did feel like. Being in one of your favorite tuned blockbuster films, Anthony. Uh, Atlas smirks hefty laser blaster. For real. Thanks for, pre for the present, Anthony. This is really cool. Cool. Cool present from the coolest brother, right? Yeah, absolutely. Grinning, Atlas sing slings an arm around you and Oscar. The three of you join your friends. So, who fired the final shot? Heart Atlas screaming from the, all the way inside. Yes, I'll be surprised if there was somebody who didn't hear him a hundred miles away. Atlas, come on, give us the play by play. As you head back to the chateau together, your voices rise into the night as you all give your own versions of the match, and you know you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to celebrate Solstice any other way. Later, you watch your friends around you laughing, sipping cocoa by the fire, when you suddenly notice Shreya is not in the room. You turn to see her standing in the doorway with the scarf on. When she catches your eye, she crooks her finger at you with a devious smile. You grin and walk over to meet each other. Waiting for me? In fact, I was, and it took you much luck too long to notice my absence. Thank you very much. However, I'm willing to forgive you if you'll agree to take a walk with me. Always, I would have gone no matter what. You didn't need to me all this, Miss V. I know, but isn't but isn't it so much more fun? Freya laces her fingers through yours, and the two of you head out into the night. night. The air outside is crisp and chilly, but just being near Shreya warms you, like she's made of fire. Isn't it lovely out here? We stay here in the summer, too. No, on occasion, but it just isn't the same as it snows. It's beautiful. I'm really happy you invite us up here, Shreya. It's been an interesting time so far. I expect nothing less when it comes to spending time with you, Anthony, darling. Shreya giggles, the sound leading, leading into the air and up into the trees. She swings you around to face her, cupping your face in her hands. Anthony, my dear, you're freezing. And you're so warm. I always run hot. Mother says it's symptomatic of my fiery temper. Here, take this. Shreya steps up close to you and wins the scarf around both of your necks. She stands so close to you, her breath warms your face. There we are, snug as a bug, and cute as can be to boot. Leave it to you to think of a creative way to make us both warm. You know what they say, sharing is caring. Yeah, well, how about sharing some of that, um, body heat?
What? This isn't close enough for you? Not nearly. Sarah wraps her arms around your waist, her body pressed to yours, making you shiver, but not from the cold. Your lips meet hers, molding around yours in a deep, scratching kiss that gradually slows a gentle press of lips. You turn your head up to look at the clear night sky. The stars twinkling brightly overhead when you look back at Shreya, she's already staring at you. Why are you looking at me like that? Um, um, forgive, forgive me. I must have zoned out. Yeah. And where did you go? She laughed a little and rests her forehead against yours. Your noses just barely brushing each other. Back at the house earlier, seeing how you were with Isabella, how caring, downright sweet you were with that poor child. I think that you're going to make a wonderful father someday. You really think so? Me? As a parent? Only if you're by my side. I can definitely see kids in my future someday. Same here. But when I see it, you're right there with me. Shred trills a tickling laugh as she leans in toward you. You can feel her smile against your lips. I don't know how c could the world really handle that much fabulous in one family tree? <clears throat> Treya kisses you, the warmth of it blocking out the chill around you. When you pull away, your breaths mingle in a cloud in the chilly air. I really am ple so pleased that you were that you all were able to make the trip up here. There's no one I would rather share the holiday with than you. In fact, I've already spoken with Mother. You're invited to spend, spend the summer with us as well, if you desi so desire. We're already talking about summer vacation? Break's barely even started. started. And yet I ha still haven't done all I wanted with, with you this first night. Mischief twinkles in her eyes. Uh oh. As she grins at you, you can't help but help the contagious smile that spreads across your own face. Trey and Mystery, what are you up to? Oh, nothing, darling. Just thinking is all. We've been here nearly 24 hours and still, and you still haven't seen my bedroom. Oh! <laughs> What a scandalous offer. <laughs> Who says I was offering? I was hoping this would come across as more of a demand. She inclines her head, her lips brushing your neck as she speaks. You feel an electric jolt rush down your spine. So what do you say? Me, you, I'll cozy under this under a silk duvet with much, much less clothing. stops here <laughs> all right there be, have to be something seriously wrong with me to pass up an offer like that you have to be absolutely mad Treya gives you a wink and the two of you slip quietly to the mystery chateau and up to the to her bedroom still bound by the scarf around your necks all right here we go Three, two, one.
<laughs> Jesus. Okay. Ooh. All right, let's finish this. A couple hours later, you and Shreya lie together, still tangled up in each other. She reaches over the side of the bed and rummage in her dresser. Oh, don't get dressed. I don't want to leave yet. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Shreya chuckles richly, settling back down beside you with a small package in her hands. I'm not going anywhere, silly. I was just getting your solstice present. I've been waiting for the perfect moment to give it to you. What, after making out? You take the you take the present and carefully undo the wrinkling design, designed wrapping paper. Built within the box is a small gold orb. Shiny. It's beautiful. But what is it? Let me show you. It requires a metal spell for activation. With a flare of metal magic, the golden orb melts into your hand, transforming it into a golden into a gold, gorgeous gold band that covers your wrist. Whoa. It's a mystery exclusive from our jewelry line. Still in development, it transforms into any accessory that... Okay. Like so. The gold band melts again, running down your hand, encircle your finger in, de in a delicate ring. You hold it up above you, admiring the look of it on your finger. A golden ring. Are you trying to tell me something? What can I say? I want everyone to know you're taken. Here curls, curls a hand around your neck, pulling you close and you toward her. For a lingering kiss, you rest your forehead against hers. Your sense is completely overtaken by her. I'm your Shreya. I don't think anyone could, for, could ever forget. I love you, Shreya. So, so much. And you, and I you, my dearest Anthony. Shreya rubs her nose against yours, and you laugh softly. She snuggles back against you, and you enjoy being close to her as the night slips into morning. <sighs> A couple weeks later, you and your friends walk across the mystery the mystery grounds, lugging your suitcases behind you as you prepare to head back for another term at Pentergast. Keep it moving, folks. The portal opens in 10 minutes and we don't want to be late. What is it, like a school bus or something? Or a bus? Or a van? I don't know. That's how I got to school. I mean, if we were, if we are, we can always take a page out of Anthony's book and pop out, pop out of the lake. Man, the weatherless bubble at Pendergast is nice and all, but I'm going to miss the snow. The horse looks friendly. The horse sculpture comes to life with a crack of ice, and then it nuzzles against its nose. It get, then it nuzzles its nose against Atlas, who flinches at the cold. Every put it back. Let's panic for the snowball. The, the, the snowball the other day. Ah, I feel so relaxed and refreshed. Can't wait to dive into classes. Easy. I can't wait to see what cozy stuff Double Trouble gets us in. Is all into the rest of the year. Really? I can use a year of respite resp resp for myself. Like for you, I've been thinking of taking it easy for a while. You whip your head around and to look at Alice taking in dead in his dead print expression, and lips twitch, twitch, and you both burst out laughing. Right, you're one Atlas. Chatting boisterously, you and your friends walk arm in arm to the portal that will take you back to school, knowing there will be more, many more sources to come. Thanks for playing. We hope you enjoyed Winter's Past, and happy holidays from the Elementalist team.
Well, that's it, guys. It was a wonderful book. Especially with the last thing with me and with my character and Shreya. Yeah. Things went really deep there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that level. <laughs> but, good thing we can't see it. Or else YouTube will take my video down. But, anyway. Um, I won't be making any videos on Wednesday. Because, Christmas! I almost knocked my lamp over. But, anyway. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new to my channel. Share this with your friends. Comment below what you think of the video. If you want to get notified of all the videos I put up on my channel, we hit the notification button next to the subscribe button. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye. Oh, and Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays.